When you hear the words sustainable farming, it's unlikely snails are the first thing that spring to mind. But not only are they rich in protein, their shells make for excellent compost and their slime is in big demand in the cosmetics industry. It's a potential gold mine if, like a family in the Southern Cape, you know how to coax them out of their shell. So, why do the French eat snails? Because they don't like fast food. <laughs> So, jokes aside, snails are often teased for being slow and being slimy, but they're actually quite strong creatures. They can carry up to 10 times their body weight and have about 14,000 teeth. The hors d'oeuvre, which is considered a delicacy now, has the potential to become a meat substitute, as it's high in protein and essential vitamins and minerals. Near George, in the Western Cape, one family has taken on this slimy challenge. Johan Olofsson, his son Kyle, and son-in-law Michael Bietre. I was just sick and tired of the hustle and bustle, and I thought I just want something more slow, and slower than this you can't get. <laughs> I saw there was a market for this, as we import 400 tonne a year. They've set up several local snail farms, but are the first processing plant in the country. Obviously, you guys are breaking the mold. This is something that's never been done in the country. To go, I had to go overseas, learned a lot, and I'm still learning every day. And I um, came back and I set it up. B burnt your fingers a bit as well? Were there some hard lessons to learn? We have lost a lot of money, yeah. But they pulled through, creating Goshan Organic Snail Farm. Snails lay eggs twice a year, and this has led to the latest food trend called snail caviar, or pearls of Aphrodite. And retailers sell these at about 30,000 rand, wait for it, per kilo. This is the caviar. It's very earthy. It's, it's like a mushroom top. Oh, OK. This is the breeding room. It's probably about 6,000 left now. There's a lot of food over there on the table, nice temperature. Um, control lighting, and then they think it's uh, long summer nights and it's time to, to reproduce. How does the, the reproduction process work? For all the snails have male and female uh, sex organs, so every snail can potentially lay eggs. So they will start cuddling, they would find a partner. They have like a, it's called a love dart, yeah. which they shoot each other with. That's where Cupid actually comes with. So, they, so like someone comes out to them? Out of their neck, yeah. And they can sit like that for, for up to 18 hours. 18 hours? Yeah, yeah. Darting? Darting. Each other? <laughs> These man-made conditions allow the snails to lay year-round. How do we get from Love Island to the nursery? There's a snail boring, mm -hmm. and he's busy laying eggs. OK. OK. Those are actually baby snails, busy morphing. When the egg becomes a snail. The egg yeah. becomes a snail, yeah. The latest harvest will yield six to 700,000 snails. 650,000 snails gives you 10 tons. 55 rand a kilo. 55 rand a kilo, yeah. Yay. Yeah. That's a bit of money, eh? Hey? These aren't your ordinary garden snails, but are in high demand for their flavor in international markets. These snails here are called Helix aspersa, and they're native to the Mediterranean region. And the process of farming snails for consumption is called helicoculture. This is where you make them fat and you grow them. Um, snails, all the babies get put in here, and after about six months' time, you'll be able to harvest them. The farm workers spot the fully grown snails, which measure 28 millimeters. You give your work, and I know everything. You know everything about Everything I know. About snails? Yeah, I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this one is ready to go yeah, to the factory? this one is ready to harvest. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is incredible. And from the smallest right up until the biggest. Yeah. We would harvest them, put them in little bags, and we take them to the processing plant. And it's at the processing plant where the snails enter into a dormant or hibernation state. At this stage, what's, what's happening? With, uh, is this when it's dormant? It, it's, uh, the system slows down completely, so you can keep them hibernated for up to eight months. If you're going to be preparing them from raw, it's quite a lengthy process. So it's, uh, it requires two boils. So the first boil is actually at the factory, mm -hmm. and the second cook would be in the actual canning process. And then that's when they would be ready to consume. The factory has created 60 local jobs, but it's quite a learning curve. I started last year in, in I'm, I'm a learner. There we go. Bye-bye. <laughs> Do you eat snails? 
It took me about, say, uh, three years. But do they taste like chicken? I can say a bit the texture of calamari. Okay. But doesn't have the taste in a bit of garlic. From being cooked, they are then taken out the shell. Mm. They don't look edible, but I think it, it might taste quite... Have you ha ever tasted it? No. no. You've never no. tasted it? No. Two years you've been working here, you've no. never... You're not it's ready? not in my food zone. <laughs> The snail meat is then cleaned thoroughly, weighed, packed and frozen, ready for the canning process. So our product is bought by local suppliers and local distributors. Um, they re request that they have their own labels. You might be eating our product and you won't even know it. And there are stringent food safety measures that need to be adhered to for these mollusks. There's a lot of ITP in the, in the process plant. Unfortunately, we cannot show you everything um, because it's taken us you know, quite long to get to this point. And then also on the processing side, you know, um, in different countries have different regulators that they need to harvest at a certain time, at a certain size, at a certain weight. It follows through to us, you know, we've got a certain percentage of meat that we need to provide. Goshen has programs in place to help those interested in starting their own small-scale farming business. They offer training, they offer their constant support. So essentially their success is our success. And our biggest issue regarding the farming is that we don't have enough. You know, we'd love to grow the local supply chain. After canning, the snail meat is then ready to be served, whether that's with garlic and butter or on a snail pizza. So when you think of snails, right, they're slow, they're slimy, and you wouldn't think they actually taste good. But I want to tell you something. Once you eat one of these, mm, that all changes. All parts of the snail are used, from its shell for compost to their guts for fish meal, even their slime. So snail mucus is a very biologically complicated substance. It helps to aid the snail in its locomotion, helps it stick to surfaces while it's hibernating, and it protects it against its enemies. But there's increasing medical value in that very sticky slime. We actually bring them through to the centrifuge machine. We use ozone to pleasure the snails. It does not harm the snails at all. Snails release mucin when they are either threatened as a defense mechanism or okay. when they are pleasured or satisfied. So we choose to use the latter. I, I don't, I, I'm still not okay with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> the snail mucin has got many beneficial properties, um, which has grabbed quite a large interest from the pharmaceutical industry as well. Internationally, laboratory tests found that snail mucin does have observable skin healing properties and both local pharmaceutical and cosmetic suppliers are on board with Goshen to use their already lab-tested products. Because you're working with a raw ingredient, it's not a constant variable. So they will buy the, the raw ingredients according to the quality of it. Um, and we've got different pricing structures. To eat a snail does take quite a cleaning process, so it's not advised you eat your garden snails at home. But the farming of these curious creatures is fast becoming a potentially lucrative new industry.